Pizza guy. You're not pizza. Who are you guys? Road trips. Today on Road Trip, we head from McMinnville, Oregon to check out the famous Spruce Goose. Vehicle for this episode, 1984 Buick Regal T-Type. And cast for this edition, myself, Todd Hilton, Mr. Mark Johnson, and also joining us is Mr. Jason Click. The maps are out and the camera's rolling, so now, let's hit the road. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Nowhere Videos Road Trips. I'm Todd Hilton. I'm Mark Johnson. <laughs> Joining us on this trip is uh, some our... guy who doesn't know his name. This is our this is our deaf mute uh, guy. Uh, no, uh, this is the newest member member of the uh, Road Trips crew, Mr. Jason Click. Hello. Also, <laughs> also known as Gold Member. Also, yeah. <laughs> And uh, today we're going to be taking a trip to uh, McMinimins oh, or McMinnville. Mc, 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 uh, Mc, McDonald's. McDonald's. Oh, no, that's not it. We're going to show you Big Macs <laughs> as far as the eye can no. uh, We're going to McMinnville, Oregon to uh, check out the uh, site where uh, the world famous Spruce Goose is displayed. Also, uh, also known as the Hughes HK1. HK1, yes. Uh, HK1 Flying Boat, I think is what they called it. Yep. And that's at the uh, Evergreen uh, Aviation Museum in McMinnville. Uh, we're starting our trip here in uh, Newburgh. Yep. As opposed to Oldburg. As opposed to Oldburg, which uh, burnt down back in the 1870s. <laughs> I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we talk like we know so much, but yeah. we don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know, squad. We don't you know. know. I mean, come on. And they built the Chevron station right yeah. over the old right over town. the top. Of, yeah, <laughs> you'd never know. <laughs> you'd never. Um, so we're starting from Newburgh. We're about uh, oh, about 20 miles yeah, away, miles, yeah. and uh, hopefully we don't get lost. Now, if we do, we'll keep the camera running. So, <laughs> so you can laugh at us. So you can laugh ah! at us because uh, um, I'm sure there's some of you out there who have actually been been to this place and know where it's at, and it's no big deal. But uh, none of us have ever been to this, I, this I've museum. I've been by it, but I can't remember exactly how to get there. So it's probably been a while too. It's been yeah, a few it's, years. And it's been at least a year. Or two, yeah. So. So. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll uh, be able to show you lots of uh, aircraft, uh, not just the Spruce Goose, but other uh, other antique and historical aircraft, and uh, maybe even get a specialized tour. We'll see what happens. So. Uh, we're about to get into the car, and uh, we'll get going. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. Break. Okay, folks. We are sort of on our way. <laughs> kind of stuck in traffic right now here in uh, uh, Newburgh. As opposed to Oldburg. Oldburg, which, as we know, burned down in 1851. Right. And they put a Chevron station on it. And they put a it. Chevron put right on top of it. You Can you believe that? Yeah, if you look, if you if you search really, really, uh, really long and hard, you'll find the old uh, tunnels underneath Oldburg. Yes. Yes. To be the Oldburg tunnels. Right. Hey, there's a great pyramid. Wow. I didn't How know far we... did we drive yeah. here? <laughs> wow. We've been, we've been on a road for a while because I saw like uh, University of Phoenix back there a ways. Right. Right, and see, I just, I didn't, that wasn't even on our, on our map. No. You know? I just totally missed this. I just, can't I get just left. cannot get left. I don't know, I'm having a feeling that we, we may have that problem once we get, you know, we find where the museum's well, at, and yeah. it's like, we'll find that we need to be in the left lane, and we're in the far right lane. Yeah. Never fails. Oh, yeah. It's always opposite where you're at. Oh, of course. That's just, that's Somebody want to get a picture of the pyramid over there? I mean, well, since we're here, <laughs> and we may, we may never get this chance again. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it's smaller than I thought it would be. No kidding. Okay. Um, while we're here in, uh, I think we're still in Newburgh. We're still in Newburgh. Um, 
let's go to the map, show you where uh, approximately where we're at here. See us, uh, see us uh, scurrying along here through uh, through town. Yeah, at a cool 30 miles an hour. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how big Newburgh is here, but uh, uh, I guess it's pretty good sized. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good sized town. I want to say it's around 18,000, but really? So that's pretty good size. Yeah. Yeah. 18,000 square feet. Uh, 18, yeah, 18. Dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, I that's see that's that. Well, we're kind of. I'm kind of stuck here now. So. <laughs> Any helpful hints from the. Uh, Patty's Deli would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anybody knowing where we're going uh, would be greatly Can you appreciated. Like call us up while we're on the road. Yeah. Oh, hey! Hey now. Hey. Hey now. You're an all star. Get your game on. Let's go back to the map and show where we're at. Uh, where we're supposed to be. We're still here in Newburgh. Actually, do you know where, which way to go then? Uh, well, you need to keep going straight up there at that intersection. You okay. Do. You so can't basically, get there from here. I need to take a <laughs> Roscoe yeah, up here. You can't get there from here. You can't get there from here. <laughs> so <laughs> what I need to do is take a ride at the retarded kid selling fireworks up here. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. So see, here's a sign right up here, right up here. As Andy Griffith would say, right here. It says McDonald's. McDonald's, yeah. <laughs> Take a ride at the, at the retarded kid selling fireworks. And there he is. Hi. There he is. How you doing? Like you baking fireworks? <laughs> you looking at my headgear? <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to my Britney Spears records. <laughs> no, I wasn't looking at your headgear. Warren, I found your ball. <laughs> right here behind your ear. <laughs> okay. We is on the road we again. We is on the road. Cruising at a cool 20 miles an hour. All right. Behind this Hopefully. guy in a boat. All right. That's just not going to work for me. Oh, yeah. Now we got some serious freaking power. what I'm talking about. Now we're, not, now we're on 99 George W. 99 W. They call me W. Prince just call me W. Hey! Oh, hey! Hey. Okay, this is a scenic route. Ah. Must be since everyone's stopping up here. Ooh, ah! Oop, duck pond! <laughs> Right lane it. Oh, great. Yeah, I've been up for a little while. Yeah, I've been up for at least another 50 feet. Yeah. <laughs> you get up here, it's like a freaking wall, you know? <laughs> Shit. Shit, I guess it does end. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, so somewhere here I need to get over. Or Bend go, over. Go over. <laughs> Red Rover. Cover. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Sokol Blosser Winery's up here. I've heard of them. Yeah. Sokol Blosser, yeah. Did we need to do some uh, wine testing? Today? I believe so. Wine tasting? Wine testing. Testing. <laughs> testing? Testing. Wine testing. testing. Wine, one, two. Okay, so... Would you like so... some cheese with that wine, sir? <laughs> okay. One tequila, two tequila, tequila three, three tequila, tequila floor. floor. Drinking problem? I don't have a drinking problem. Drink, I get drunk and fall down. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that kind of like actually, the... one, actually, one of my favorites is that you go to the Rose Garden for like a game. They'll have up on the big screen, they'll say, if you have an alcohol-related problem, please see one of our alcohol monitors. I keep wanting to call one of them over there and say, excuse me, I have an alcohol-related problem. When they say yes, and what would that be? I don't have any. <laughs> Get me some. Get me some. <laughs> Something needs to take my mind off this game. <laughs> we got the Mountain Dew Gardens over here to our right. 
do the do. Gardens. <laughs> Aha! Evergreen Aviation Museum. 10 miles ahead, left on Highway 18. Okay. All right now. Everybody take notes. Remember where we parked. I left my pen at home. <laughs> <laughs> 10 miles ahead, that means uh, right now you're 81.3 miles, so when that thing hits about 91.3, <laughs> we should be there. We should be there. Keep going, boys. We're all gonna sit. And the official uh, drink of uh, Nora Video's road trips today... Chocolate milk. Would, uh, yeah, no, okay. actually, would be chocolate a... Riptide Rush. <laughs> the choice of champions. I don't think Somebody so. needs to escort that guy onto the road. Yeah. Or escort him to the nearest junkyard. Yeah. There's a Studebaker Lark. Oh, here you go. Obsolete Harley Davidson cars. Sweet. Now I know where to go for all my obsolete Harley Look. Davidson cars. Cemetery. What a Lark. Entering Lark. Crocodile Dundee. Dundeed. <laughs> the Dundeed. Dungaree. Okay, there are a few. There are a few things worse than uh, warm Gatorade. Warm Seven Up. Ooh. Yeah. Warm tomato juice. Oh man. <laughs> warm skunk. Uh oh, never mind. <laughs> warm Clamato. Ugh. Warm pina clamato. No. Okay, I was gonna say. But I mean, I can imagine that's like that would clam be... juice, dude. Yeah, that's gross. Clam. Okay, it's about time we got up to. Uh... Yeah, it is about time. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just couldn't get it to go any faster. I wanted to, but. Anyway, you were saying? Ooh, gun club. <laughs> what was I said? Road closed. Looks like it's grown over. Tail wag in. Wagon. Tail wagon. Hey, now you're catching on. What was I saying? Mark, what the it's hell was I talking about? It's about time that we got up into the map. I don't know. You're going to say something. Like Eggers, that. Acres. Hammer Acres. Hammer <laughs> Acres. Hammer Acres. Hammer Acres. Conception. Now, if it said conception, well, you know, you got like a parking zone for conception only. <laughs> Boy. I my thrill. That sounds like something they'd have in like Arkansas or something. Like conception only lanes or whatever. <coughs> parking for conception only. That was instituted by Bill Clinton back yeah. in the days as governor. Of and boy, are they packed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Salem, Ocean Beach is next left. Highway 18 goes 10 miles this way. Next left, Evergreen Aviation Museum. No, it just says. I think it said next left. Maybe I better. My next left guys. or your next left? I don't know. Lafayette. Oh, yeah. This is oh, okay, yeah, this is on 18, so yeah, this is 18. Okay. This way, so. Turn here. So what you're saying is... Turn here. Turn here. Yeah. Yeah, this does look kind of familiar. Yeah? Oh, yeah, you, okay, you said you drove right it. past it? Okay. Yeah, I've driven by it on the way to Spirit Mountain Casino. Ah. Yeah. Well, there's on the, the way strawberry. way to gamble your life away. Yeah. What's that? I said, well, there's the strawberry. That's a big strawberry. <laughs> yeah. 
Shut up, you took big strawberry. <laughs> strawberry fields forever. Okay, so you have to like wait for traffic here. Yeah, yeah see, see this I, is not good. I kind of got a problem with this. Um, you think you could? Uh, yeah, see, that would be great. Well, that stops for them. Okay, yeah. not for me. Yeah, for me. I don't know. Stops just aren't for me. Yeah. Four, and a half miles. Four and a half miles to aviation headquarters. Right arm, dude. Left, right left arm, dude. Or right. That way. Go west, young man. Yeah. Get him away. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have I haven't made minimum wage for for about uh, three years. Yeah. So it's it's pretty good. Okay. Um. Let's go back to the map and show you where we're at. We're uh, just uh, just minutes from uh, entering with Midville and uh, approaching the uh, Aviation Museum. Hey! Oh, hey! Hey, now that's 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 quite a bit of hay. That's a lot of hay. That's a lot of hay. Oh, hey. Okay, we're five miles from the, from the, the from Mickey D's. Right. <laughs> or from, from Mickey M's. Mickey V's. Dude, isn't that the Spruce Goose up there? Yeah. I don't think they flew it anymore. Yeah. That's going to be pretty cool. I've been wanting to see that oh, thing for a while. Doubt. How I many engines did just, that thing have? Was like it four or eight? Eight of them. Eight? Four on each wing. Crap. They still didn't have enough power to barely get off the ground. Yeah. It got off the ground though, once. Yeah. I believe that was water that it got off of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's what they call a flying boat. So I don't, I don't know. Did the thing actually have wheels at all? No. No. Nope. So it, it was do now. water, water only. Yeah. Welcome to McMinniman. Yeah, there's 26,000 people in McMinniman building. Look for the dirigible buildings. There's airplanes over there. Dirigible hangar, dirigible hangar. You'll see, you'll know it when you see it. Trust me. Yeah, there it is right there. Holy crap. Yeah. Okay, you can't miss that. No. A blind man couldn't miss that. Oh, man. Evergreen Aviation Museum. Hercules, or Hercules. Turn right, quarter of a mile. Okay. You can kind of see it through the glass there, but not really well. Oh, yeah. Right on. Right here? You sure? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> ah, hell, on. Museum entrance. How about this one right here? Okay, let's use this one. <laughs> Well, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hold my sign. I don't want to lose it. Well, they got this out in the middle of like an orchard or something. Pretty much. Right out in the middle. Now, of is the museum nowhere. split into two parts or something? Because they got a plane over there. What's up with that? Strike Eagle. That's part of the airport, I think. Is it? Small airport here. Well, maybe we'll find out once we uh, once we get in here. Well, no, I guess they do have some more airplanes out here. No, this is actually where Evergreen International Aviation, where their oh, airport okay. stuff is. Okay. Is over here. Or is Huey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Huey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> we'll crash the gate. Okay, folks, we are heading right into the Spruce Goose here. Yeah. Um, as I go a little oh, bit wait. off road. <laughs> Park out here in the uh, somewhat south 40, just so we got room to we all get out here. Or at least some more can get out, you know. Right, you know. It, it requires so much freaking room. Right. Maybe I'll just take up two spaces. What the hell? <laughs> sure. 
that's what it Okay, folks, we have arrived at the uh, Evergreen Aviation Museum here in McMinnville, Oregon. Uh, as soon as we figure out just how to get in and what we need to do and uh, who we need to kill, I guess, uh, we'll come back. <laughs> Locked okay, and loaded. <laughs> okay, we're in. <laughs> we're in. Okay, so uh, we'll be right back, folks. Man, even the lawnmowers sound like old airplanes around here. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> okay, so like Jason took off of that. He's over there. Oh, holy crap. Okay, let's go check that out. <laughs> yeah, I bet this thing was modeled after the spruce goose. Oh? Well, I mean, look at the look at the design of it. Yeah. The wing going across the top. The engines where they're, where they're placed. And they used the same design, I think, later on. Or similar design. Yeah. For the looks of it. And just used more powerful engines to get it up off the ground. Instead of having it take off out of water, they take off off the land. And yeah, Mark and I were just wondering if they had any real planes around here. Oh, <laughs> I think these are models. They're built to 1 30th scale. Right. Yeah, that's not much. <laughs> Let's fly. Yeah. Uh, oh, what the heck, let's get in. <laughs> You know, there's got to be a book or something in there. Right? Oh yeah, some kind of ordered manual or something. <laughs> I can fly this. You know? <laughs> tow bar limit? Oh, it actually has a tow bar on it. Uh oh. They hmm. took the fire extinguisher out. Uh oh, that's no longer up to code, I'm afraid. Well now, what's up with these here between the... Uh, Engines. Those are extra field pods. Oh, those are? Oh. Here, help me turn this thing. <laughs> I don't think so. Holy crap. Yeah, that thing holds like at least another five gallons of fuel. Yeah. yeah just in case you're running low on that right. you know, trip across the ocean. <laughs> Holy crap, man. The one of, one of the propellers is one of the four props on there is as tall as I am. Yeah. Huh. Imagine if that's so the back end of this thing drops down, apparently. Hello? Hello? Let me out of here! Let me out of here! <laughs> if I hear somebody knock back... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh. right, we're out of here. We're out of here. Huh. Well, this is Mark Johnson here with Road Trips. I'm here with uh, Todd Hilton and Jason Click. Is that right? And uh, we're actually here at the Evergreen Aviation Museum. And uh, sitting behind me, if you can see it, I mean, this thing is so immense. I'm actually standing under the wing. Yeah, I'm actually standing under one of the wings of the Spruce Goose, the Hughes HK-1 flying boat. And uh, I think Todd's getting a good shot of the wing. This thing is just, it's, it's immense. I've never seen anything so huge in my entire life. And uh, I've been wanting to see this for years and I'm finally here and uh, we're gonna take you around. We're gonna show you some of the other planes and helicopters uh, that they have here on display. And uh, we're gonna let you all follow along with us. So, come on, walk this way. Follow me, Todd. Okay, what we have uh, here, if you can get a shot of it, is a Curtis JN-4A Jenny replica. It's a uh, military trainer aircraft is what it was used for. Uh, the first flight was in July of 1916. It has a wingspan of 43 feet 7 inches. Length is 27 feet 2 inches and height of 9 feet 11 inches. Uh, the weight of this aircraft when it is when it's empty was 1,390 pounds. When it's loaded is 1,930 pounds. Uh, it is a one one engine uh, plane uh, powered by a Curtis OX5 90 horsepower engine and. Uh, 
Maybe, maybe this gentleman. Oh, we'll take anything we can get at this time. See those rocker arms? Your mechanics? Yeah. See those rocker arms? There's no oiling on them. Right. See those wheels? There's no brakes. <laughs> so what happened on this thing, when they'd go out to fly this thing, they'd have enough to take their little oil can. Now this is castor oil and squirt every one of these real good and they'd fly for about an hour and they'd come back in and land. When they landed, the good Lord stopped them. They didn't. <laughs> and, it, and that's why these were always land-based and on grass and that sort of thing. Then they'd squirt the little oil across these again and they'd go fly for another hour. Now, you know what happens to a person when he's taking a lot of castor oil. <laughs> and they did. Wow. Right in the chin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine it was more than the chin. <laughs> But that, that's the little, little quirks that go on with these things. Wow. These things, this was left like this deliberately, not just to show the remarkable way that these were put together. They're a tremendous airplane. The only weak spot on them was the engines, and they just weren't quite that worked out. Now, they did develop the next one. That's this one back here. That's the de Havilland. This was made in Canada, but they were made in the United States and Canada, but they never saw combat. All they were was training airplanes. Mm. They just were training. This thing cost around 4,500 to build. That was back in 1918, 1917. You know, that was a lot of money. And they sold them when that war was over for 500. But you still talk $500 back in this when you're getting 10 cents an hour. That's still a lot of bucks, a lot of bucks. Wow. But they were quite an airplane. How'd they get the plane in here? You know, I mean, they pretty much had to build the building around the plane. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was actually, it was actually, yeah, it was actually brought in in pieces. So, it wasn't actually fully assembled. You know, some assembly required, assembly as required. as they like to say. Yeah, um, I, to yeah, I know. Yeah. But uh, let's uh, actually let's let's kind of take this in. Uh, I don't. Know, I don't want to say chronological order because, obvious. Obviously, this one preceded this one. This is a very beautiful replica of the 1903 Wright uh, Flyer, and uh, obviously the the only. And from what I'm being told by uh, Mr. Nelson here, the only existing original one is the one in the Smithsonian. And I was under the impression that one of the other ones. Uh, the one that was on the Smithsonian tour, traveling tour, was actually one of the originals, but apparently that was a replica. That was not a, uh, a genuine original. Uh, I can imagine, I can see why though, when you have to load and unload that, uh, all that precious cargo, you don't want to put the original in there. True. So, but anyway, probably the most famous plane in history besides yeah. This thing. The one entire, room. entire room, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, Stoughton bus, circa the 1920s. And uh, it says this Stoughton bus was used to transport passengers to and from the f out there. And it's sitting here in McMin McMinnville, Oregon, folks. So <laughs> if you want to see a beautiful, uh, beautiful old bus from the 1920s, now you know where to go. That's just absolutely beautiful. Well, check that out. Inside, there's some kind of a meter or something on, up there on the, above the driver's seat there. Oh, okay. Huh. That's just incredible. Great doctor. Spent, yeah. Okay, this, this is a... Uh, okay, this model here, this this model shows the Hughes flying boat Spruce Goose as the great at the grave dock hangar where it spent more than 30 years, also called the Terminal Island hangar. It was here that the final assembly of the flying boat took place. The massive pieces were constructed at the Hughes aircraft plant in Culver City, California. When flooded with water, the grave dock provided access to California's Long Beach Harbor. Workers built the hangar over and around the enormous aircraft after its historic flight on November 2nd, 1947. 
Hughes spent about one million dollars per year to maintain the flying boat in the grave dock hangar. After the flight, until Hughes' death in 1976, very few people saw the flying boat. Access was given for the most part only to inspectors and maintenance personnel who were charged with keeping it in, 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 in flight-ready flight condition within 36 hours notice. So they, up until 1976, they intend, fully intended to still use this. And it was built in 1947, so, you know, that's incredible. Todd, let's, let's have you get a shot of the wingspan. We're right at about where the wing meets the fuselage. And, and just get a quick glimpse of how long this this wing is. I mean, we're talking, what, 50, what did they say, about 50 yards? Just shy of 50 yards, I think, is what they said. Had like a 300, what'd they say, 150, 300, 300 and some odd foot wingspan on this thing? Uh, I didn't catch the specs yeah. myself. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch those over here in just a minute. We've only been on one side of the museum. True, we so. got a whole other side to check <laughs> yeah. out, so. We can't even see what's over there yet. <laughs> sheer size and immensity of this first goose is just it shadows everything else in here. Absolutely. <laughs> that is just incredible. That makes it awfully hard to take a picture. <laughs> no kidding, huh? Yeah. You can't take just one. No, huh? oh well the <laughs> the building of course is enormous, but the size of the aircraft makes it so that you really can't position for a picture and take a picture of, you know, part of the skin or something, but right. that's all. Take a picture of the. Oh. I have some more. Uh, actually, I have some more picture photographs there of uh, the uh, the disassembly or the reassembly. Yeah. Well, let's have a look. These look like proposal plans for either the original or more. Yeah, so some kind of yeah. sketches on what... Either plans for the original or plans for variants of. They've got one on section 7 there where it shows the goose being used as a um, sort of a patient transport. Here we go. Here's the specs. Okay. Type prototype. Um, cargo aircraft. First flight, November 2nd, 1947. Flight. <laughs> Wingspan was 319 foot 11 inches. Length, 218 foot 8 inches. Height, 79 foot 4 inches. Tail span, 113 foot 6 inches. Total wing area. 1100 and or 11,430 square feet empty weight 300,000 pounds loaded weight 400,000 pounds for maximum takeoff it uses eight Pratt and Whitney R34 uh, 4360 3000 horsepower engines eight propellers with a diameter of 17 feet 2 inches payload is 130,000 pounds uses an average or normal crew uh, complement of 18 and can transport 750 troops or two Sherman tanks. Top speed 227 to 231 miles per hour at 5,000 feet. Range almost 3,000 miles and service ceiling about 200,000 feet or 20,000 feet. So this could actually, if, if it would have flown at, at the 5,000 feet that it was intended to, could have almost gone from the west coast to the east coast on one tank of fuel. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> several one tanks yeah. of fuel. Yeah, several one tanks. Yeah. 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 Well, if you look right up here, it almost looks like you can see where they moored it to the, to the dock or...
Yeah, there is indeed an anchor on the ground. <laughs> Very absurd. I guess they didn't want it to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't yeah. want it to go anywhere. Well, we don't want it taken off here. Well, it's not yeah, like you're going to lose it. But here they got it lifted up on the big crane. That is a very big crane. <laughs> I guess. What's, what's the story on this here? It says the Hughes flying boat went into hibernation after its famous flight. Stored away in its special hangar, it was out of the, out of the public eye for 33 years. All the time, Howard Hughes kept the plane in immaculate shape and ready to fly. It was rumored that it cost Hughes $1 million per year to preserve the aircraft. Uh, after Hughes' death in 1976, it appeared that the Hughes flying boat was to be disassembled. The giant plane was saved by entrepreneur Jack Rather, who moved it into a massive domed hangar next to the famous ocean liner, the Queen Mary, in Long Beach, California. Beginning in 1983, the plane was put on public display. In 1988, the Rather Corporation was bought by the Walt Disney Company. Disney didn't see the plane in its future plans, so the search was on to find a new home for the aircraft. Captain Michael King Smith, the museum's founder and son of Evergreen founder Delford M. Smith, submitted the winning proposal to provide the avi aviation icon with a proper home. In 1992, the Hughes flying boat was disassembled and transported by barge up the west coast, then down the Columbia and Willamette Rivers to Portland, Oregon. It remained in the Portland area for several months until the Willamette River's water levels permitted the huge structures to safely pass under the river's many bridges. In February 1993, the huge parts of the aircraft were transported by truck for the last 7.5 miles to McMinnville, Oregon. Temporary hangars were built as housing for the aircraft and volunteers began work on the aircraft's exterior restoration. In 2001, assembly of the Hughes Flying Boat was completed in its new museum home, which is obviously where we're at right now. Yes. So. Well, wow. I guess why don't we work our way around to the other side here and see what we got. Here's some more, uh, some more photographs here, and there's uh, one of the uh, famous pictures of uh, the actual flight. Wingspan is longer than a football field. It says if you place the Hughes flying boat on top of a football field, the wing tips would extend 10 feet over both end zones. The nose and the tail would extend well into the spectator sections. Wow. Hmm. This is incredible. So now what do we got here, this, this photograph here on the, on the bottom here? Which one now? Here? Uh, to, to the, well, to the right. To the right? Uh, it's like it's got a part of a parade or something. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, I don't know if this was when it was actually being, uh, when the fuselage was being transported uh, to the final assembly plant or what. And it, here, here's a little tidbit for you. The spruce goose is actually made out of birch wood. So why didn't they call it the birch goose? Probably because it didn't it didn't rhyme. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean you know, it just makes you wonder about some of these things, you know. It's yeah. actually made of birch, but they call it the spruce goose. Hmm. All right, go figure. You figure this uh, got about 2,700 horsepower, uh, 27,000 horsepower, and it's something like that. Now Hughes flew it himself, didn't he? Yeah. Hughes made doggone sure he flew it himself. He wouldn't allow anybody else in the cockpit that had a pilot's license. He didn't want somebody saying, well, Hughes didn't fly it, somebody else did. Yeah. So he, I don't blame him. He Put flew that it. kind of money into something like that, I'd want to yeah. fly it myself, too. <laughs> Absolutely. He flew it for about two minutes, took it back, put it in the hangar, and went home and got drunk. <laughs> Whoops. Probably, <laughs> probably, I don't, I don't know, but uh, went, took one of his movie star girlfriends out, and uh, never went back to it. At least some, some sort of a celebration that he got it off the. Left it there the water, for. Though, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, he got it off the water. Left it there for 36 years, never went back to it. Cost him a million dollars a year or so for 
armed guards. Wouldn't it be nice to have the money to lose like that? Yeah. Well, when he was working on this thing, his companies were bringing in about a million dollars a day. Okay. So he put in nine million of his own money. Yeah, I'll make it up next week. Yeah. You know, things like that. Yeah. But it is a it is an achievement. Uh, now, did it cost what? Did it cost nine million to build. Is it that? cost about twenty one million to build, and that's a lot of money in those days. Yeah. Hugh, Hugh, money, Hughes put in now. about nine million dollars, and uh, then he started in forty three and finished in forty seven, and uh, Brewster, Senator Brewster, in the Senate. Was calling it his flying lumber yard and things like that. And he uh, bawled Hughes out for wasting government money and the people's money. And Hughes said, don't forget, I got $9 million out of my, my own in that uh, deal. And he said, if it didn't fly, I'll uh, leave the country and never come back. Well, about a month later, he took it down and got it all assembled at Long Beach and, and uh, flew it. Not long, two minutes, a couple of miles, 80 feet high, something like that. Yeah, and in the footage, it doesn't look like he's that far off the ground. It looks no, like he's about, uh, they said, 70, 80 feet off the off the deck. It's amazing, because when you see it, when you see the actual video footage of it, it looks like he's maybe four or five feet off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess... Well, it's all relative to size. This thing, right. uh, you've got 80, over 80 foot of rudder up there. And if you want to, there's two ladders in that rudder. You can, a man, man can climb all the way up the top of the rudder. It doesn't look that big. It just doesn't uh, look that big. The plane we're looking at right here is an Avenger. Um, a lot of people recognize that name because it's one of the um, one of the squadron of aircraft that was lost in the Bermuda Triangle and they sent in a rescue plane which also got lost. Um, another interesting fact is I believe it was George Bush uh, used to fly one of these um, back in his uh, war days. George Sr. or George Jr.? George Sr. Oh. <laughs> yeah. okay. George Jr. was flying a set of diapers. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> We got some uh, got some more planes to our left here, and we got a couple of uh, engines right in front of us. Yeah, uh, it comes back to that whole rotisserie thing we were talking about. That's a B-17 right there, right? Yes, that. Oh, right on. There's a B-17. We're gonna have to go look at that. Isn't that isn't that uh, some flights through Germany? Uh, one that uh, you might recognize the name of would be the Memphis Bell. Ah, no. This is a stupid question because, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about aircraft. But what what type of aircraft was the Enola Gay? That the Enola Gay was a B-29. B-29. Okay. It was quite a bit bigger than this aircraft here. Quite a bit smaller than the Spruce Goose. Right. <laughs> the silver plane over here. Um, is one of my favorites. It's a P-51 Mustang. <laughs> and obviously one of my favorites. <laughs> um, oh, let's go look. Was, that was one of the planes that won the war. Is, uh, is the Spruce Goose here still the largest aircraft in the world? Do we know that? To the best of my knowledge, I think it, on one of the signs that it had over there, I do believe that it still is the largest aircraft ever built. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Right on. So even our commercial largest, airlines are not as big as <laughs> largest aircraft that's ever flown. Okay. So yeah, it is the uh, this is basically the the Titanic of aviation here. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, without it actually crashing or sinking. Or, right. You know. Which we are very fortunate to have it in one piece and be able to see it yeah. close up. That is just. This is, this is no replica, folks. This is the real. This is thing. the real thing. Yep. And actually, I think there's only maybe a, a couple of replicas in this museum. Uh, the one Wright brother, Brothers plane, and I think maybe one other. Well, um, the one that was right next to it, that wooden one, was, was actually the replica, but I think most right. of the rest of them are actually... These the are originals. originals, yeah. This is the one I was looking at from the back. 
This is another seven cylinder uh, uh, radial aircraft engine, 220 horsepower. I don't know, it almost looks like the same engine that's off to the left side here, only uh, it's stood upright the way it would actually be in the in the aircraft. The word I was looking for. Radial as opposed Radio. to rotisserie. <laughs> rotisserie. That's it's one of those rotisserie engines. You can fly your plane and make a bag of microwave popcorn at the same time. <laughs> Over here, right in front of us here, we got uh, what appears to be a jet engine. Hey, very good. Um, and that thing in itself is huge. We thought I was big. And yeah, we, we thought Mark was big here. Turbo fan? A jet engine. It's what's similar to what is used in the commercial aircrafts that we fly on. Huh. Here, give me an idea of how big this thing is. Let, yeah. me, let me stand like right in front of it here. I if let me go back. Yeah, let me go over the thing over there. Let's yeah, see. as we just stand next to the... <laughs> now, I'm six foot six. <laughs> I stand six foot six inches. This thing dwarfs me. <laughs> Give you an idea how big this thing is. So. Yeah. Holy smokes! I mean, even the, even the fans are numbered. There's 46 fans on here. Oh no, kid! Individually numbered. I wonder, I wonder what the uh, purpose of that would be. I have no idea. Oh wow! Check that out. That is huge. And I, I work in auto parts, but I couldn't begin to identify the pieces of this engine. <laughs> well, basically, it, it's an induction system. Um, what you see behind the the um, oh, what do you call it? The uh, housing is the injection where they introduce the fuel into the flow of air, and instead of using like a compression, it just sucks the air in through the front and they introduce the volatile fuel and in the turbulence it ignites and produces thrust out the tail and basically that's how you get your force forward. Hmm. Hmm. It's a giant turbo. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, so, yeah. that's all it is. You can actually see a second set of uh, fins uh, inside. Mm -hmm. Of course, those normally... Are, those are the compressors. Oh, oh yeah? yeah the, the fins in the front are the induction fins. The fins in the tail are the compressor fins. And on the inside, it has another set of fins uh, for the turbine. Okay, uh, over here we got a uh, B-17. Looks like it's in uh, pretty good shape here. Now that, oops, sorry, got it. <laughs> that there is an aeroplane. This thing's pretty big, actually. Lots of guns. Got the uh, uh, lights there in the wings, like spotlights. You notice around uh, just about every one of the aircraft they have um, like drip pans or something. Actually, under each engine, they have a drip pan. Actually, I'm kind of wondering if they ever take any of these out and run them. Maybe not necessarily fly them, but if if they run any of the engines. I mean, they they look like they're in functioning condition. Um, you you know a little bit more about these than I do. What? What era are we looking at for this particular plane? Uh, this plane was used um, in World War II uh, for almost the duration of the war. So you're talking about 1938 to 1945. Um, it was retired close to the end of the war uh, for the most part and replaced with the B-29, um, which would be uh, the bomb uh, dropping plane likes to drop bombs, has a, almost twice the payload as the B-17, um, but uh, more importantly it's called the Peacemaker because it led to the end of the war with Japan uh, by dropping the little man and fat boy, um, the first one being uh, on Hiroshima and that would have been the Enola Gay. Uh, the second one, not too many people know the name of uh, the plane including myself. <laughs> 
but uh, I'm pretty sure it, it was uh, dropped by <laughs> by a plane. Otherwise, they couldn't have gotten it over there. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> much more uh, practical. Uh, much more practical than the hand-thrown nuclear weapons. Right. Among the other smaller than the Spruce Goose aircraft, <laughs> this is one of your larger ones oh, yeah. here. I mean, I I believe I'm not sure if it was a B-17 or if it was a a different type, but I, uh, my uncle was a, my late uncle was a, a tail gunner. I believe it was a B-17. I'd have to ask my mom. She would know for sure, but uh, I think it was in a B, I think he was a tail gunner in a B-17 in the cool. war. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, now, now see. Now see here. <laughs> see, that, see that underbelly gun there? Yeah. I didn't that remind, see that. Does that remind you of anything? A couple of things, actually. Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah, wonder where Star Wars got the idea. I've got to say, Todd and, and Jason, I've I've been to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, and I've seen some pretty awesome planes. I saw the the, the plane that Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier in. I've seen the Spirit of St. Louis. So big big names in historical uh, aircraft. <laughs> they had a couple of Amelia Earhart's planes there, and they had the original restored Wright brothers original 1903 flyer and I mean I like I said I've been there and it doesn't compare to this man. No. I mean, it really doesn't yeah it just yeah you what can you say about the Spruce Goose other than just wow <laughs> it's just it's uh, in the video here what we're, we're showing for you folks here I mean it really doesn't do it justice you really have to come here and, and just see how immense it is. Take a road trip of your own and come up to McMinnville and I mean for you folks in St. Helens, it's not that far of a drive. We no, got, we got it wasn't that bad. Just a little over an hour. Yeah. You know. It's yeah, close, we, it's we've been planning on trying to do this for a long time, and it's not that far away. It was just right. a matter of finding the right time Co to do it. Coordinating <laughs> schedules is what it took. Yeah. So. I know, trying to look up there. And... This, this plane here by, uh, that I'm looking at right now has this whole tin roof appearance to it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of... Yeah, Ford like to make planes out of aluminum siding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no kidding. This is actually uh, it's like a, a passenger, type of passenger plane there. They tried to make it relatively fancy there. It got curtains in the windows there and, and uh, nice comfortable seat. Hey, check that out, Mark. The the wheel chocks even say Ford on them. <laughs> right on. I used to work for a Ford dealer. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder if I could order those. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get some wheel chocks for a uh, 1928 uh, Ford tri-motor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, I never had anybody uh, ask me for anything that outrageous. But right. Here's the uh, Captain Michael King Smith Evergreen Aviation Education Center. This is where we are currently at, and uh, you, are here. you are here, not so much here or here, but this has uh, the model of the Spruce Goose in it. And yeah, complete with the Spruce Goose inside. Yes, so... Spruce Goose inside. <laughs> Boy, is it ever. Holy smokes. I mean, you just stand here and look at it, Todd, and it's just incredible. I mean, it's just... It's, bre it's big, breathtaking. It's now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's breathtaking. I mean, the size of this thing. Yeah. You wonder how it ever got off the off the water in the first place. I mean, it's so immense. Well, I guess it it, it all comes it all comes back to um, uh, one man in his dream. <laughs> he made it happen. That he did. Okay, folks, uh, that's gonna do it for uh, this edition of Road Trips. Uh, we hope you enjoyed your tour of the. Uh, uh, Evergreen Air Museum here in McMinnville. Mc, 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 that's it. <laughs> here in McMinnville featuring the Spruce Goose. Uh, let me tell you, it's something you have to see in person. There's just no way to uh, describe how enormous this thing is until you see it with your own eyes. Well, let's <laughs> give you a little preview or, or a little comparison. The, the plane that we're standing in front of oh, yes. was used uh, in three missions on D-Day uh, to drop troops over Normandy, imagine a plane seven times this size. And Only getting, bigger. And Only getting, bigger. <laughs> yeah. And you're getting close to the yeah. size of the Spruce Goose. And this is not a small plane by any means. No. Oh, no. 
In fact, know. this is bigger than any of the smaller planes that are in the museum there. I think, uh, I think B-17, I think, is bigger. Was isn't it? it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, B-17 is. B-17 was bigger than this. This is about the size of a DC-3. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, big. <laughs> but big, yeah. But yeah, and so, you walk you walk into the museum, and the first thing you see is wing. I mean, yeah. you're like looking up, and you just you're under the wing. You're under the wing, <laughs> and and you look forward, and it's still going and going and going, and and it's just it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but it's really something you need to see for yourself, and uh, we give you a small glimpse of what they uh, have in the museum right now, and they have more cool things yet to come. Yes. So definitely worth checking out. Yep. Um, so uh, with that, I think that's going to do it. Uh, so for road trips, uh, I'm Todd Hilton. I'm Mark Johnson. And I'm Jason Clay. And we'll see you. Uh, we want to thank you for watching. And we'll see you for the next edition of Nowhere Videos Road Trips.